Well, the traveling circus has a rich history in this country. The first one opened in 1793, and through much of the early 20th century, about 200 of these circuses crisscrossed the country, bringing exotic animals, daring feats to big cities and small towns. Today, only a handful remain, but that same thrilling experience lives on for both the audience and those who live the circus life. Chris Bury followed one such circus for this morning's American Snapshot. The sun is barely up as the Big Top ritual begins. The Carson and Barn Circus has come to town. It's one of the last true traveling shows in America. There is so much work to do. This is how it's been done in traveling circuses for more than a century. The raising of the mighty Big Top, and still, it inspires awe. They may be whistling to lighten the load, but make no mistake, the work is hard, the hours brutal, the pay low, so it must be a labor of love. To what extent is the circus in your bones? Oh, it's definitely in my bones, in my blood, and in my whole being. I was born on the road, and I'll probably die on the road. Barbara Bird has known no other life. Her grandfather founded the circus 73 years ago. It's not a job that you can say, oh, well, I'll do this and, and until something better comes along. I mean, you have to love this life and this job to do it. Consider the elephant trainer. Steady Isla. His story is as old as the circus itself. I just quit school and ran away with the circus. You literally ran away with exactly. the circus. You know, this is what I've been doing all my life, so I don't really know anything else. For 38 weeks a year, they lead a nomad's life, living in trailers, treasuring touches of home. For the children, including young performers, a one-room schoolhouse on wheels. For 13-year-old Francesca Cavallini, a budding trapeze artist, geography is hardly academic. I've been to New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, California. I've been to Washington, um, Texas, Oklahoma been to South and North Dakota, Montana, Wyoming. I think I've been like maybe to the half of the United States. On this day, it is Columbus, Wisconsin, a quintessential small town, like so many that the circus visits. Here, the very spectacle of the Big Top and of course those elephants seem to strike some universal chord. By now, classes are over. Francesca undergoes a metamorphosis from schoolgirl to circus star. I don't really think of this as a job. It's not really something I'm forced to do because I want to do it. Since I was small, I've always wanted to. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Now she is that girl on the flying trapeze, working with her father, aunt, and cousin. My father taught me, and just like his grandfather and his great-grandfather, Unlike some edgier and sexier acts, Carson and Barnes is the sort of circus that your grandmother attended. The entire crew is small enough, a hundred or so, that everyone works two or three jobs. The star in the center ring may have been, uh, you know, helping set the tent up this morning. Uh, so they do do several jobs. That's just the way of the circus. These traveling extravaganzas and their prized pachyderms once roamed the countryside. But their numbers have dwindled from more than 200 to only a handful. A proud but fading sideshow in the ever more crowded showbiz marketplace. In their heyday before World War II, circuses commanded dozens of train cars and marshaled massive parades. They made the Ringling Brothers spectacularly rich. Carson and Barnes once boasted a full brass band five rings under the big top and a thundering herd of animals. Now it's down to an electronic soundtrack, one ring and only three elephants. They insist the show will go on. We want to stay in business. We want to keep the circus alive in America. So you do what you have to do. Someday, maybe it'll all come back. I really see myself in the circus for the rest of my life, just like my grandmother. Do you expect your own children to be in the circus? Yes. No doubt about it. No. <laughs> After a two-hour matinee, the clowns and the contortionist, the poodles and the flying cavallinis do it all over again. 
Their work is hardly over. Now the big top must come down. Cast and crew packing up to play yet another town tomorrow. This traveling circus life, not an easy one, unless it's in your bones and in your blood. I'm Chris Bury, ABC News, for Good Morning America in Columbus, Wisconsin.